Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to see how we can process an image to give it a sort of high key or much lighter look in Lightroom. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's have a look and choose an image to use. Now, I took four photos of the London Eye and there were some really interesting cloud formations behind it and I looked at these images this morning and thought, okay, well, it's time to have a look at processing one of these. And the first thing that I needed to do was to make a decision about which of these I wanted to use. Now people are always talking about the rule of thirds and moving your subject off center, so these two images would tend to lend themselves to that. But you know, sometimes the best rules are meant to be broken and for this particular process to process an image to high key, I'm really, really interested in this one because it's really nice and symmetrical. And what I plan to do is to crop it so that it's actually square. So we're going to get a sort of Instagram feel about it, but this is not an Instagram process. So I'm going to choose one of these two images. I'm just in survey view in Lightroom, so I can just click to get rid of these images out of survey view. And then I can decide which of these two images I want to use. As I'm going for a high key look, either of these images would suit pretty well, but I'm thinking I'm going to use this one, so I'm just going to deselect this one. And since we're still in survey view, we can go back into loop view by just clicking on loop view, and that just takes me to this image. Once I've made my selection, I'll just go into the develop module. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to crop this image. As I said, I wanted to do this as a one-to-one. -one. I just think it speaks better as a one-to-one -one image. So I'm just going in here. I have a crop of one-to-one -one and I just want the top part of this image, but I'm also going to make sure it's straight. And I think I want to center this a little bit and I'm not sure that it is properly centered. So I think this is a pretty good crop for the image. I've lost perhaps a little bit more of the image than I would have wanted to, but it's going to look pretty good. So there's our starting crop. The first thing I'm going to do with this image is to try and white balance it, or at least make it warmer because it's a really, really cold image and that's really not the look I want. So I've just grabbed the white balance selector here and I'm just going to click on a portion of the image that I think should be white or neutral grey. So that's a really good start for the image. I'm looking at the histogram here and it's actually is for my camera pretty well exposed. Um, my camera is not usually as good at exposing as it has been with this image. So I'm actually really quite impressed with the result here. I have however increased the exposure just a little bit. Now I'm going to leave contrast alone at the moment. Let's just go and find our white and black points for this image. So I'm going to Alt or Option drag on the white selector until I start to see some whites because there were no pure white pixels here. So I just want to start seeing the very faintest amount of white. I'll back it off a little bit, but that's a pretty good white point for the image. And I'm going to do the black point again, Alt and drag on the blacks because I want to start seeing blacks come into the image. Even though we're doing high key or light processing, we still want to see a good tonal range in the image. So I want some blacks there somewhere. As I was looking at this image and noticed that while the London eye is pretty sharp, the trees in front are not sharp. And that's because I shot it with a very, very large aperture. It's 3.8. This is a huge aperture. So it's not surprising that these trees were out of focus. We have a depth of field effect happening here. I'm just going to turn the overlay off. If you need to, you can get to that overlay by pressing the letter I and you just press it three times to get back to where you were. So these trees are out of focus and what that's suggesting to me is that it would be really nice if we actually kept throwing them out of focus and we leave just the London eye itself in focus. So I'm going to do things that are going to reinforce that lack of focused feeling. And one of them is to destroy the contrast, to take the contrast way back off here. I'm also going to back off clarity because clarity is a mid-tone contrast enhancement and it also sort of sharpens things. 
well, I don't want it to be sharpened. I want to go for this light, sort of a little bit foggy look, if you like. I think I'm going to hold off vibrance right now. I do, however, want to warm the image up. I think it's a little bit on the cool side, so I'm just going to increase the temperature here and also perhaps build in a little bit of a tint that's sort of slightly magenta color and it's sort of working pretty well with the blue so I'm actually liking that effect. Before I go too much further I'm going to actually add a vignette to this image. Now typically when I do vignettes I just throw really really dark effects on my images and I really like that effect but since we're looking for a high key look, we're going to take our vignetting the other way. So I'm going to start dragging the amount to the right. Now this is way, way too far, but you can see the effect it's having. It's got a slight softness in it. We've got a reasonable size feather here, but if you drag your amount slider to the right, you go to white. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more of a feather here and I'm going to back my amount right off because I want my effect to be largely in the corners here. Don't want a real lot, but I do want to sort of lighten up this image a little bit. So once I put down my vignette, I can see what I'm working with with the rest of the image. But actually before I leave there, let's just try the styles. We've got highlight priority, color priority, and just paint overlay. And you know, the one I never use is Paint Overlay, but I'm actually going to use it here because it's becoming a little less obvious. Let's have a look at Highlight Priority. See, we're seeing the very white edges and Color Priority, same thing. But Paint Overlay is actually working to really good effect and I might be able to actually increase the amount of the vignette because I'm using Paint Overlay. So unusual setting for me, but it's working for the image. Now let's go back to the basic panel and see what else we can do. I'd like to have a look at shadows and highlights. I'm probably going to bring a little bit of detail out of the shadows. So increase the shadows again because we're going for this high key light white look. But I'm probably going to back off my highlights a bit because I do want a bit of contrast, but I'm going to build contrast this way rather than with the contrast slider. Now I think I'm also going to reduce clarity a little bit because we're going to build back some clarity in a minute. I'm really liking that sort of clarity amount. I'm looking at the edges right now to see if I've got those and I think I've pretty much nailed the edges. It's the middle now that I'm concerned about because I've lost the detail and the sharpness in the middle and I want to get that back. I can get it back in one of two ways. I'm going to use the radial filter. This is new in Lightroom 5. If you're not using Lightroom 5, if you're using Lightroom 4, you could just do the adjustment brush and just paint over this middle of the image and adjust it that way. But I'm going to use the radial filter. So I'm going to click on the radial filter and drag outwards from here. Now, the problem with the radial filter to my mind is it works exactly the opposite way to the way you would want it to work. What we are doing is affecting the outside here rather than the inside. I want to invert the filter, so I'm going to click on Invert Mask. And that just means that whatever's happening is happening in the middle of the filter, not on the outside of the filter. I'm going to feather it a bit more. I really want a soft feather because I don't want to be able to see where the filter begins and ends. Now the exposure is increased here. I just want to take it back to normal. Now what I did earlier was I knocked out the clarity. So I went to negative clarity on the image. If I go to a positive clarity now, I'm going to bring back clarity and detail right in the middle of the image, but it's not going to be at the edges. So I'm effectively negating what I just did with clarity, but only in the center of the image. And that's a really good effect there. And I may also go for a bit of sharpness. I think I've got a bit too much there. Let's just go for this amount and then let's click Done. Now I'm going to pick up my adjustment brush because I want to paint over some areas that I want to work with here. I'm going to increase the size of the brush a little bit. Perhaps bring down the flow and density a little bit. And I'm just going to paint over the areas that I want to work with. Now, 
the exposure is turned on right now and that's just not what I want so I'm going to turn that off in a minute but I'm going to turn it off after I've erased off the bits that I don't want of this adjustment so I just want to erase around here a little bit trying to isolate the fix largely to the legs and the sort of center here on the London eye so I need to bring my brush size down a bit I can do that with the square bracket key or the size slider but that's one of those key strokes that I really think is worth learning because it works in Photoshop as well the square bracket key for just adjusting the size of your brush the opening and closing square bracket keys so that's a pretty good selection there it doesn't need to be dead accurate but we do need to turn off this exposure adjustment and I can reset any of these sliders to their default value by just double clicking on them so I'm going to move clarity up here because I really want to enhance these legs here I want to get quite a bit of sharpness there as a contrast or a foil for what's happening around the edges so I'm going to click done one of the other things that I'm thinking of doing is bringing in a little bit of color into the image I still think it's not quite warm enough and I also want to borrow these bits of light because I think I could enhance those so I'm going to increase the tint and the temperature a little bit just to try and bring in a sort of yellowy color and now I'm going back with the adjustment brush this time I want a really low density and a low flow and a fairly sizable feather because of what I'm about to do so I'm just going to follow this light and I'm going to size down my brush and pick up the areas where this light is being picked up on the sort of legs of the London eye if you like and anywhere where that sort of beam of sunlight is hitting let's just show the mask overlay you can see that this brush because I've decreased my density and my flow it's actually painting at a very very slow rate so even though the exposures turned up here we're not seeing it in a big way on the image because we've just got such a low flow brush and that's fine by me I want to build this effect up I don't want it to be hit really really hard I don't want it to be too much and I just want to pick up where this little bit of light is in the image so let's go back to the image and actually in fact I don't think that this exposure is far off I think just a little bit of extra light in the image captured there using the adjustment brush is going to work really well now we could still build a little bit more contrast into the image if we thought that it was just a little bit flat we could just drag the contrast slider back a little bit and it may behove us to do that so here is the image that we have so far this is the before and this is the after now I'm pretty happy with the result and we could finish here but I think it's worth having a look at one additional feature in Lightroom that may work with this image and that's the split toning adjustment often you'll do that to a black and white image but you can also do it to a color image I'm going to drag on the hue slider here and I'm going to hold the alt or option key down as I do it because I'm looking for a color to put in the highlights of the image and these are the lighter areas of the image so as I'm looking at this and dragging it around I'm having a look at this area and this area to see what the color looks like because that's the point that is going to get this color when we actually apply the split tone effect so I'm pretty happy with that it's a sort of yellow almost slightly into an orange now for the shadows I'm going the completely opposite way so I'm going to hold the alt or option key down again and drag on the hue slider but this time I'm looking for blue and I'm looking for a really really good blue a deep deep blue almost just on the tip of going to purple and I think that's a good color there so I'm going to let go now nothing's actually been applied to the images yet we've just picked our colors to actually add the color we'd drag on the saturation slider so this is 
full saturation I just want a tiny tiny bit so I'm going to go to like somewhere less than 20 here just to tip some of that yellow orange into the highlight areas and again if you like this you don't need to go any further you could just say that's fine but I wanted to actually add a little bit of blue into the shadow area so I'm going to drag on the saturation slider here just to bring a little bit of blue in and the reason for this is that I actually think that it makes the trees stand out a little bit more I think that the blue rather than the black actually works really well once we've selected the colors and the amount of the colors we can then adjust the balance now this allows us to say okay all of the image is shadow so throw blue at everything or all of the images to be considered highlights so throw yellow at everything or somewhere in between so here we're adjusting the point at which colors go to blue and at which they go to yellow so the point will be more blue over on the left more yellow on the right and I'm thinking that I want probably just on the more blue end of things so I'm going to go to about negative 33 here but again this is just a creative decision that you make let's see now how the split tone effect is I'm just going to turn off the split tone and turn it on again and I like the effect that it's given the image I actually really like the color that it has brought into the image so I'm going to leave it in place and let's go back to the image as it was out of the camera and this is what we've achieved with it I think this is a really lovely result I'm prepared to stop here if I wanted to do something else with this image I may consider taking it to Photoshop and adding a texture to it I think it'll come up really nicely with that but we're in Lightroom this is Lightroom we don't have texture in Lightroom the best we could do is add a bit of grain but I'm pretty happy with the image as it is I'm Helen Bradley thank you for joining me for this video tutorial look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop Lightroom Illustrator and a whole lot more